Well, I was wrong. Apparently, the self-driving cars are coming back, only not as big as you'd probably think. Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur, and yeah, we're going to talk about the autonomous vehicles again, the driverless cars. I mean, I think it's funny that, I, I, I wonder if people really think this is still going to happen. Because here's the problem with overselling on a concept. We have heard multiple times, I've been doing this for three years three years and I finally hit 10,000 subscribers. Thank you all, by the way. And I have kind of been at odds on this topic with other Uber tubers um, and former Uber tubers. A lot of people said, hey, this is the end goal, self-driving cars. And I was like, guys, the self-driving cars have never been able to answer some common sense questions. When a product cannot answer a common sense question. I'm suspicious of it. I am very suspicious of it. And I've just never believed that these self-driving cars are gonna come, or at least not gonna come anytime soon. Yet all these companies insist, absolutely insist, oh, it's gonna be everywhere by 2020. It's gonna be here in two or three years. It's always two or three years away. And yeah, sometimes you get in and you have like a young guy or a young girl and they're like, oh, I can't wait till I don't have to drive. I can drink whatever I want and I can just go. And it's like, no, you still have to watch your liquor. You still have to get a designated driver. You still have to call an Uber because these things aren't going to be super common. And I have seen people put them or companies, I should say, put them on the road and they do limited things. Mind you, they do something, but do they actually drive without needing you know, a human to intervene? No. Do they um, think and make sensible choices all the time? No. Do they get stuck frequently because of like paper bags and stuff that are in the road? Yes. Do they hit people and kill them? Yeah, they do. And I think Uber has that market cornered. But Uber is still going to push forward even though this has sucked them dry ever since day one. And According to New York Times, Uber self-driving cars are set to return in a downsized test. So what does a downsized test actually look like? Well, here it is. Eight months after one of Uber's self-driving cars struck and killed a pedestrian, the ride-hailing company is close to putting its autonomous vehicles back on the road in a drastically reduced version of earlier efforts. So drastically reduced. That means 2020, not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Don't even wait for it. Don't even don't even play with it. Oh, and by the way, Google, even though they have their cars on the road, that ain't going to happen either. Uber was driving its autonomous vehicles on public roads in four cities, sometimes at night at speeds as high as 55 miles an hour when testing was halted after the accident. Starting within a few weeks, it's plans to run the vehicles on a mile loop between two company offices in Pittsburgh. They won't operate at night or in wet weather, and they won't exceed 25 miles per hour, Uber said Wednesday. Okay. So, the limitations, they will not operate at night or in wet weather, which, frankly, I don't think they were able to do anyway. That's the other thing. These cars don't drive with rain or snow. You start to see one of the problems. Yeah, when they test them in sunny Arizona and L.A. and San Francisco, where it's always sunny in Philadelphia, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't resist, then, you know, these things aren't being designed for the middle of the country, the middle of the country who, the more that I read CNN and Fox and watch YouTube and stuff, I'm starting to think middle America is starting to feel a little ignored by most of the world as California, New York, and Florida care about issues that most of the working class people simply don't care about. They don't. I mean, if you drive around Tennessee, most of them probably are like, we don't even have internet that works over here. Why are we curious... Why do we care about the driverless cars? But anyway, but even as the company has lowered expectations, its autonomous car technology has faced considerable issues. The cars have reacted more slowly than human drivers and struggled to pass so-called track validation tests, the last step before returning to city streets, according to a dozen Uber documents and emails, as well as interviews with seven current and former employees who spoke on the condition of, of an amenity because they are not allowed to talk publicly about the company. Well, thankfully, I am allowed to talk publicly about the company. I kind of like that perk, you know? The scaled down street testing would be a humble return for a cutting edge effort that Uber's executives once considered a key to its prosperity. 
While Uber is growing fast and is expected to make its debut on Wall Street next year, it is wildly unprofitable. The company lost $1 billion in its most recent quarter. And by the way, that's connected to the rates. We're going to talk about that probably on Monday or Tuesday. Self-driving cars were supposed to help cut Uber's losses by eliminating the need for drivers, perhaps the company's biggest expense. But expectations were well ahead of the technology. Oh, you think? <laughs> you think they were well ahead of the technology? I mean, when these things are running over people and, <laughs> you know, and hitting them at speeds that most people could have stopped on time, yeah, the ideas are definitely well above ahead of the technology. Uh, let's see here. Oh, there's a nice little picture. At a recent staff meeting, Dara Kurashahi, the chief executive, acknowledged errors in Uber's dr earlier driverless car efforts. We did screw up, he said, in comments provided by Uber. Yeah, he also screwed up by cutting the rates, treating the drivers badly. You screw screwed up by expanding overseas too often. You screwed up by covering up the data hack. Do you want me to go on? No, you don't want me to go on. You want me to finish this article so that you can go watch Boogie 298 or something more entertaining. The San Francisco company took its autonomous vehicles to Arizona in 2017, deploying more than 100 on roads around Phoenix. In March, a woman in... Tempe was fatally struck at night by one that was going 39 miles per hour along a 13-mile route. It was one of about 200 Uber self-driving cars being tested on roads in Arizona, Pittsburgh, San Francisco, and Toronto. Some test drivers had worried that Uber was too aggressive. Well, they're always aggressive. That's the thing, and we talked about it on the last podcast. The company was built on an aggressive culture that does not care about anyone but growth. It doesn't care about anything but growth. And it doesn't even care about making money. Otherwise, they would have made money at this point. So, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. And you can't change that. Even the new CEO can't change that. Um, after the crash, Uber vowed to keep its autonomous cars off public, public roads until it could ensure they were safe. And because it, the Arizona governor pretty much said, yeah, he said, yeah, get the, out, get out. We do not want you here. He's not actually French. It's just, I don't know. I like it when the French accent, even a bad one goes like, get that out of here. So I'm going to get so much flack for that. I know I am. Um, the company issued a 70-page safety report and added more rigorous testing on closed tracks and in simulations. But as recently as a few weeks ago, the company's autonomous vehicle unit, Uber Advanced Technologies Group, or ATG, was still experiencing track testing failures. And at this point, the cars have been around for a while. You would think they could figure that out on different versions of its software, according to internal company emails. To match the reaction time of a human driver at 25 miles per hour, the cars need to drive 20% slower than a human, Brandon Basso, a director at ATG, said November 1st email. Even at slower speeds, the cars were passing only 82% of test tracks, according to the company's documents. That is not a very fast car, and for it to be feeling that much, that's a good 18% of failures. You want to put these things back on the roads with people? My one of my original video or one of my videos from last year stands. The question still stands: Who will Uber kill next? That stands at this point. Not changing it. A week later, Eric Mayhofer, who heads the unit, declared that Uber was going back to 25 miles per hour. The faster speed would prove that the cars were unequivocally worthy of being back on the road. He wrote in the email. Um, yeah, I bet. Some engineers thought there was another reason, Mr. Hay. Mayhofer wanted to demonstrate progress to his boss, Mr. Kawashahi, and they worried that Uber was taking shortcuts to hit internal milestones, according to two current employees. And you know what? That would make sense. That would make sense. Not only because Uber is a crummy company, but here's the thing. I actually reported that Uber CEO, he's never been fully on board with these driverless cars. I've made videos about this. One of the first things he wanted to do when he became the CEO of Uber was get rid of the damn things. And they convinced him not to. And then this happened on his watch. And 
Then there were reports that they were considering spinning off that technology or that division, selling it to someone else because it was costing him a lot of money and there wasn't anything to show for it. So it kind of makes sense that maybe he's not too enthusiastic about this idea at the moment. And so the people in that division are trying to cut corners to save their jobs, with which I sympathize with those people. But of course, that's just going to result in another disaster somewhere down the road. But it doesn't surprise me that this might be happening. An Uber spokeswoman, Sarah Abowd, said the company would not compromise safety to meet development. <laughs> oh, yeah, they won't compromise safety. I bet they wouldn't. Quote, as we have said many times before, our return is predicated on successfully passing our rigorous track tests and having our letter of authorization from the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation in hand. While Uber's cars have been off the streets, its competitors have pushed ahead with similar projects. Not exact, sorry, not exactly the same, but similar projects. Google's autonomous vehicle unit, Waymo, started a driverless ride hailing service in Arizona on Wednesday. Oh my gosh, how did I miss reporting on that? Another contender, Lyft, started a robotic ride hailing service in Las Vegas this year with the manufacturer Aptiv. General Motors acquired the self-driving startup Cruise in 2016, has since netted major investments from SoftBank and Honda. Oh, SoftBank, the guys who invest in Uber and Lyft. I'm, I'm having issues with this one company owning big stakes in every aspect of rideshare. Seems like I should make a video on that, but I know that one's going to take a long time to do the research on, so it's going to have to wait. And been testing the vehicles in San Francisco and other locations. Mr. Mayhoffer was confident that Uber's cars could resume stream testing in the summer, and he instructed engineers to start planning a party to celebrate the return, according to five people familiar with the plan. But employees worried that a party would appear insensitive and it was set aside. Probably a good idea. Some changes were easy. When the Uber self-driving car struck a pedestrian, its solo safety driver was watching a television show on her phone and didn't hit the brakes until after the impact, according to findings from National Transportation Safety Board and the local police. To prevent conflicts between Uber software and Volvos, Uber had also disabled an emergency braking feature that was standard in the Volvo Sports utility vehicles the company used. That's because it conflicted with their software. Another mistake. Government guidelines for the autonomous vehicles testing are, at best, piecemeal. Under rules the company set for itself, the testing vehicles would always have at least two people driving and monitoring their systems, a standard among its competitors, and the braking system would be turned on, which should have never been turned off. But you see, here's another thing. Uber was cutting corners way before the accident. So, and they're still cutting the corners, apparently. So, how, how much... How much is uh? How long is this going on? So anyway, let's cut, scale down to a little bit of this. I'm gonna have the whole article below. Uber pushed the return date to November 28th, but when a test in early November ran Uber's vehicles through more than 70 categories at 25 miles per hour, they failed in 10 of them, including being slow to recognize another car that didn't yield. Which yeah, I kind of expected that. One of the things about these self-driving cars is. It's very, very hard to program a, a computer to react to unpredictable human behavior. In an email, John Thomason, who, Thomason, who leads the software efforts at ATG, urged employees not to panic because this wasn't the latest version of the autonomous software. Ms. Abowd and the Uber spokesperson said some of the failures involved intermittent braking, but the company did not consider it a safety. They, didn't, they don't consider that a safety issue. This is a long article. Another of en a number of engineers on the team anticipate that they would miss another deadline, but Mr. Mayhoffer sent an email on November 27th declaring that as of 6.30 p.m. that day, Uber's autonomous system was ready for on-road testing. Uber still hadn't received permission from the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, but management was ready to declare victory. Ms. Abound said that as of Wednesday, the company has not received a response from the state. Yeah, because they're probably looking at the results you have where it's failing all these things, and they're like, uh, yeah, that's not ready for the streets. This is a huge win, Mr. Mayhoffer wrote. We are nearly there. I can hardly wait to see us hit this. <laughs> wow, we are nearly there and you're failing so many tests. And here's the thing, once you, even if you pass the tests, they're just tests. It's still just an enclosed area that you tightly control. It doesn't mean it's going to work on the actual road. So let's go back up to this, Um, to, there we go. 
there we go. Let's just let's just leave it there at that nice little car. So yeah, in my opinion, Ubers is full of it. They are so so full of this. I mean, judging from this article, they aren't even close to having these things ready. They just aren't. And all of these insiders who, I agree, they probably shouldn't talk on the record because they could get fired, but they are not confident. The only people who are confident are the bosses who want to sell the fact that their job should not be fired or that they should not be transferred or whatever, or spun off, that they are doing a good job and they should continue. I don't think that's going to happen and... They haven't received a response back from the state. I don't expect the state to give them a response. I mean, they'll probably test it. They probably will test it with Waymo and all these other companies. I think those cars are going to have some problems too. I really do. But hey, we'll see. Maybe these cars are just two or three years away. Just like they were two or three freaking years ago. Anyway, comment below. Like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy these videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, of course, but even as little as one dollar a month goes a long way to helping the channel run smoothly. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one. Boy, this was a long one. <laughs>